This is the plaintiff, Ayanna Bean. She says she hired the defendant to publicize a documentary about her life called American Gangster. And the woman took her money and did nothing. Yes, that's right, she paid her $5,500. The woman made a logo for her, changed her Instagram name, and that was it for three months. If this woman thinks she can go around ripping people off like this, then she has another thing coming, because she's here suing her for every penny of the $5,500 she wasted. This is the defendant, Chantavia. She says she did plenty for the ungrateful plaintiff. Things like coaching her for media interviews, photo op with the mayor of Boston, and rewriting her bio, which needed a lot of work. The woman was a no-show for events she set up for her. She always came up with some cockamamie excuse. And she earned every penny of her fee and refuses to refund any of it. She's accused of doing nothing. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $3,000 for non-payment of fees and work completed. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that she hired the defendant, a publicist, uh, to publicize her life story, which is being turned into a TV movie. The defendant says she did everything she could to do the work to publicize the the plaintiff's story, and she deserves the money she got. It's the case of do-nothing publicists. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Ms. Bean, uh, you were being featured in a BET documentary called American Gangsters. Is it a series? Um, it is a series, Your Honor. Okay, and so one of the, one of those episodes was going to focus on you. Yes, it's a um, why. Um, I myself, um, I was contacted by the network due to a, a criminal case that I had um, some years ago. And the network was featuring um, a, a number of women on the show that had committed crimes and um, had either, you know, been in prison or along the lines. And I okay. I was and what was the crime that they contacted you because you were convicted of what? Um, federal financial fraud. Federal financial fraud. And what was the nature of the fraud? Tell me more or less the facts. Sure. So I was a f- financial aid advisor. I'm at a college, and I use um, financial aid funds for personal use. Are you talking about the funds that were intended as reimbursements for the students? That is correct. Yes, that was one case. All right. So wait a second. So that happened in what year? 2012. 2012. How long did you serve in federal prison for that one? Um, A year and a day was my sentence. All right. And then, but apparently you were already convicted of a financial fraud many years earlier? Ten, Ten years prior. And what was that financial fraud? It was, again, I was working at a college, and um, the funds that were used to pay the students' debt. Okay. I'm just curious how the second college hired you with a conviction on your record for stealing college funds, you know, years earlier. How did they hire you? Weren't you surprised when they gave you the job? Um, In a sense, yes, but it had been so many years past, so I didn't believe that that one conviction was on the record still. But Did they know the, about it? Well, this is what I'm saying. At the trade school, they didn't do a background check. Oh, okay. So you slipped through the cracks. That's, a, That's really how you... Right. Right. Okay. So let's talk about what happens. So BET, the network, reaches out to you. They say, we want you to be featured on the show. And you decide that it would be a good idea to get a publicist to work on Correct. how your image looks. All right. Um, and I, I believe that in the complaint, you called it branding. You wanted to brand yourself. Well... And what I wanted to do was I I had a little bit of knowledge of how, you know, I I wanted to make sure that it was presented, you know, correctly. Um, You know, my conviction is a part of my past. I've moved on with my life and I'm doing other things. So I knew that I needed an expert to be able to help me to 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 do that. Um, And so I set up arrangements with a young lady for um, with a stylist for a photo shoot. What was the photo shoot for? The photo shoot was just going to be pictures that I could use as I'm not, you know, had not been taking any professional pictures um, for any media outlets or anything like that. So I had, um, okay. was fo- following And that's the how you got the name was- of the defendant. That is correct. All right. So you call her and she tells you it's going to be $2,000 a month, correct? Um, and we agreed upon $2,000 um, as I used okay. what I received from doing the show to pay these fees. Because the documentary paid you to be able to use your story. 
Yes. All right. So now you end up hiring her and you pay her mm -hmm. 2000 according to you you paid her 2000 for May, 2000 for yes. June, and for some reason mm -hmm. she agrees to 1500 in July. That was correct. And that's okay. what I got we it. agreed upon so for that. So what month. It, what was it? Okay. What uh, did you sign a contract? Is there a written contract between you guys? Um, what I sent over the documentation I received was a questionnaire that she sent over to me, and I completed that questionnaire as well. Okay. For new Let me ask you, Shantavia, is there a written contract that the both of you signed? No. She brought me on initially. Um, she, was, she wasn't familiar with what PR was exactly, which is fine. So she said, okay, I want to rebrand, vamp my brand. I had a clothing store in the past. I want to bring everything together get my message out to get ahead of this story. So I said, okay, I'm going to come up with and a game plan. And what was the message she hired you to come up with? What's the message? Pretty much that she's turned her life around. She's passionate about prison reform and wanting to make a difference in supporting women that have been incarcerated. So that was the message, in addition to some things she was passionate about, which was also fitness. And in the day and age of social media, she wanted to bring everything together to make herself a brand, which is what we agreed to do. So she had had some, some of her past uh, work experience in the industry was music related. She wanted to tie in music and make sure that some of her media press was on the music end of things. Some was a little more political when it comes to, you know, the incarceration, incarceration and prison reform and a couple of other things that she was passionate about. So we went through a whole branding okay. campaign. So here's had... my question. What did you do for your money? She wants you. Right. She's suing so... you because she wants you to return two and a half months worth of fees because right. according to her, right. you, you did very little. Go ahead. So the first month started off with me working hand in hand with Leah on the shoot to make sure it tied into the branding direction that we needed to go in with her media kit, her social media revamp. We had to clear out her entire Instagram, unfollow several thousand accounts, make sure her Twitter was up to speed, her Facebook, et cetera, that she's a positive role model now. She's, you know, has a good relationship with her family, her children. Um, she had fittings for her premiere event that she missed at boutiques. I have the emails to show confirmations that she pulled a no show. When she came into town for a skating event, she was supposed to come in to go sit down to take her to um, a radio station that I wanted to take her into where she would do, you know, uh, interviews where she couldn't really talk too much about the series. So we had limitations. She told me about a month or so in that BET had contacted her and said that she can't mention the name of the show, no court, nor can she mention the name of the network that it would be on. So now after I had all of our pitches created and I had already reached out to media contacts telling them that we have this client because that's the leverage. BET was a leverage. Ayana didn't have a brand yet. So in the midst of that, she said her point of contact at BET said that this show or this version of the show, the Trap Queens edition, hadn't been mentioned. So we can make no mention of that in any interviews or any of our write-ups. So that was the first hurdle. So that's when I told Ayana, I said, OK, I really need you to come in so that we can kind of get an understanding in black and white of what direction we want to go in. In addition to the branding and all the social media things and things in writing, I was in the middle of producing her event that she wanted to do in New York for her premiere of the series. She wanted to do a two location premiere. So I put my card down for that, by the way, thinking that, you know, we had six months to work everything out. So anything that I paid out of pocket for, I would recoup towards the tail end of our agreement. I already knew that Ayana didn't have this extensive budget to, to work with, but she assured me that this was an agreement that would be at least six months. If she could have it her way, she said right, she would want see, to Right, but see, that's, that's on months. you, right? Because you, you are the right. professional, and it's on you if you don't right. get a contract in writing. And these right. days, there's very Absolutely. little excuse for that because you just get them committed right. to write. So you have no business thinking it's a six-month deal unless you have them in writing right. that it's a six-month deal. You get the call. You do get paid month one. You do get paid month two. You get uh, right. paid month three. And then what happens? She contacts you and, like, you don't hear from her. She ghosts a little. So, so you I reached reach out, out to her. Right. I reached out to her on, I believe, August 19th. That's a text message. And I said, hey, Yana, I tried to reach you several times last week. Um, this was, I needed to get some garments sent to her because she was going to be attending Fashion Week. So I needed to get her sizes and her dimensions. We didn't even get to talk about this. I just have the email trail for that. So um, she said, oh, I've been really busy. Sorry, there's a lot going on right now. She said her son is in the hospital. Um, I'm going to need to suspend services. I said to Ayana within two minutes of responding, okay, great. Let's get on a call tonight at least to figure out what our game plan is going to be moving forward. That was it. So she and decided to not send her. 
Oh, no. Oh, no, we didn't speak. She didn't call. Um, at least I never received the call. I called Diana the next morning, the next Monday, to check in to see if everything was okay. And after that, I don't know if she blocked me or what, but she never answered a call from me after that again. And it was just really strange right, to so me then because the I next never time received... that you hear from her, so the next time you hear from mm -hmm. her isn't until um, uh, September, February. October, November, December, until January, until February. That's when you hear from her again, correct? Yes, correct. And not, what not does she word. say to you? Oh, right. she what sent an she email. She wished me a happy new year. She said, happy new year. Um, I hope all is well. Um, can we get on a call or something along the lines of her feeling like the services weren't up to her standards? I respond in detail with my reasons for why she, you know, I don't, I don't think she's deserving of a refund. And that this is the first time I'm even hearing that she was ever unhappy with my services. Right. Okay. We'd never had a So let me exchange. ask you a question, Ayana. Why is it that six months later you magically decide that you should get money that you paid six months earlier? I'm kind of curious. What changed? Well, I contacted um, Shantavia in February by email, as she stated, so that we could talk about the mm -hmm. services. As again, she said that she didn't hear from me. Again. There's a couple of things that, the, well, to answer your question, why I did that. Please, I did yeah, that right, because right. I was out of, um, I was going back over all of the, you know, trying to put this business together, doing this work by myself, and I was going back to expenses and things like that. I paid for an expense of public relations, and I did not have anything to, services to match up with the expense. I never missed any uh, scheduled events because I didn't have anything scheduled. I myself scheduled everything that I had done. It's documented by my social media. I presented to her and sent her on emails that I uh, arrangements that I made with others. She never scheduled me I for anything. I see a photo the in the photos that you on in the These are, you didn't. This is you on what shows? This is my friend uh, Gazelle Alexander, who also was helping me as far as radio. He was doing media as far as radio. This is not okay, something so she, that was according set up to with you, Shantavia. These are things that I did on my own. Okay. These are things that All happened right. long after you and I disconnected. This, there's no way that these things could have happened during the short window of time. Because that, you would have known about it. She would have told you, right? I would have known about it. All right. So um, the pictures that I'm looking at here, did, did Shantavia have anything to do with organizing these, or these are the ones that you took beforehand? Your Honor, these are photos yeah. that were taken on the photo shoot that I had already set up prior to speaking with Shantavia. This was done with okay. the Okay, all of them, DJ including the outdoor ones, too? Every everything. This was some of the first photo shoot I have ever taken in my life that I scheduled with the stylist, okay. and the stylist had her own photographer. What happened is okay. that because no, okay. The so my next question also... to you: Stop a second. Stop a second. Stop a second. My question to you is: Do you have a witness that you want me to hear from? Apparently, you both have witnesses you want me to hear from. Correct? Um. Yeah. My witness is Gazelle Alexander. Okay. Hello, Your Honor. Hi, uh, what are you a witness to on this case? Okay, so um, Ayanna and I have been friends for close to 20 years. I work in the music business, and she has worked alongside me um, in the music business. Um, when we found out that she was getting this American Gangster uh, episode, uh, she decided that she wanted to definitely beef up her, her media. Um, the stuff that I do, I do radio, and so I was able to get her on I can get her on any radio station anywhere in the country. So that part wasn't an issue. What Ayana feels that she needed help was was the other things that we couldn't do, which was get a little TV stuff, get some magazines, a little bit of uh, blog, that stuff that wasn't really in what we do. She wanted help in that, and that's why she hired the, um, the PR person. So we can get into those events and do that, but she needed help with getting in blogs, which is what I was expecting when we spoke, was that we get some blog mentions. When you say we spoke, hold on stuff. one second. When you, when you say we spoke, are you saying that you spoke with Shantavia? All three of us were on the phone together. We had yeah. initially okay. after. Okay. Let me ask you a question, Shantavia. You have a witness as well who you want yes. me to hear from? Uh, you, yes, my witness is uh, Leah J. She's a stylist at work with. Wait, give Ayana. me one, on give me one second. Hold on, hold on. Hi, what's your name? Leah. Okay, talk to me, Leah. What are you a witness to on this case? Um, I am. I know Shantavia and Ayana. Ayana is a former client of mine, and Shantavia uh, used to represent me as far as PR. And what do you do for a living? 
I am an entrepreneur slash small business owner in marketing and advertising. Okay, so how was Ayana your client? Oh, um, for styling. I used to style a couple of years ago, so she was a okay. former client of mine. All right, so is she, are you the one who gave her Shantavia's name? Yes, I was the referral. So what do you know about this case? Uh, so I was supposed to be the principal stylist for styling her on her upcoming events with um, PPRM. So did she fail to appear to some events? Yes, Ayana didn't show up. How many times? Uh, two or three. All right. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, okay. You also have a counterclaim against, thank you. You also have a counterclaim against her, Shantavia, uh, yeah. for money that you feel you should be paid for other months that were after she put the pause. Uh, you believe that you should be paid for September and October? I, 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 what are you suing yeah, for? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I'm also the things that I paid out of pocket for, you know, cake deposits, separate repeats for events that only didn't happen because Ayana pulled out of this agreement that we had, whether it be verbal, right? Written, she pulled out of it. Because you, so, ex um, right, right. But, and verbal agreements are completely enforceable. The problem is that you had banked on having funds come in for six months, so you'd make it on the tail yeah. end. You'd recoup on the tail end, and that's not something that you secured. You didn't secure a six-month yeah. contract. So yeah. uh, let me ask you this. So you're suing for what months that you feel you should be paid and why? Yeah, so um, there was a lot of having to go in and clean things up. Um, I was on countless calls. What months countless and emails. why? Oh, September, what October. Months? So she told me, so September, October, what did you, and November. Okay, prove to me what you did in September, October, and November. I was under the impression that the show was supposed to air on an October date, not January. So I'm sitting here getting press lined up for this event we were supposed to have here in New York. Just the time that went into manager and monitoring things while I'm right. waiting Can to you hear prove from Ayanna that? to Can save you prove face. that? Well, I have Can emails, you, you know what I mean? Can I have, you have emails of that. Right, and I have do you have any emails? Shows. Do you have any emails or confirmations of shows for the months of September, yes. October, November? Okay, and did you give those into evidence? Yes, I did. Um, you'll see in the wording okay. in the emails for the future dates. I see July, I see May, I see July. I'm not seeing anything for the months you're trying to get payment on. And interestingly, you had never tried to get payment on that before now. Just like she didn't try well, to get her money I, back until February, you hadn't tried yeah. to get payment on this until now. Did you ever say to well, her, hey, you owe me September, why, October, November? Well, she never called me, but that was the plan. And honestly, when the I got to no. You had me, never billed her no, for September, no, October, November. No, ever. I did not. All right, I'm no, ready I to rule. Not. Let's stop. I'm done. We got it. Okay, so the contract is an agreement between you two that you're going to release $2,000 in funds and she's going to do X. When I look at this case, most of these PR cases that I get, it's in the first month that someone's complaining. I have something sort of unique here. I have you paying month one, month two, and month three. I have you shelling out money, so I don't have you complaining she's doing nothing. I have you apparently pretty happy with what she's doing because if you weren't happy, it, is, it boggles the imagination why you would keep paying her. Furthermore, you don't even complain about anything and demand your money back until six months later when the documentary money runs out and you sat down to figure out your finances. On your counterclaim against her, you're all of a sudden coming up with you. I work September, October, November, even though in August there's text and communication between you where she says, I have family problems and we have to put a pause on mm -hmm. this. You were told to put a pause, and I believe you did put a pause. I don't think you work September, October, November. And see, the best evidence for me to figure out how to rule is you guys. So if it's good mm -hmm. enough for you, it's good enough for me that you were getting your money's worth. And if it's good enough for you that you weren't supposed to get paid, guess who else it's good enough for, too? Me. So on your counterclaim against her, zero. And on your claim to recoup all the funds you ever paid her, also zero. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. We're going to take
Well, we have a 0-0 tie here in the People's Court. Let's talk to the plaintiff first. Ms. Bean, I, I have a question that really I want to ask you sincerely. If you were preparing to get a whole new image, why on earth did you let the American Gangster Television Series tell your story and present you to the country as a convicted felon? Why'd you do that? Well, I don't, I don't think that I'm shamed by being a convicted felon. We have a lot of people in the world that are convicted felons, and they should know that they can still remove their past, they can still carry their past in a positive light. So I don't feel ashamed that I put my story out there because that story could help another young woman who may feel like she wants to hide her life, and I don't think that that would be fair. So that's why I'm very passionate, and I'm okay about being an open book to tell my story to help another person. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You lost the case, and that's it. That's the judge's verdict. Now let's go to Shantavia. Uh, you didn't win here either. It's a loser for you. What do you think? Yeah, it's just really unfortunate. You know, more so, I just, I hate to hear that Ayana is all of a sudden so unhappy with my services and our working relationship. That was really a surprise to me. Um, I mean, honestly, I know I did the best I could. It was one hurdle after the other, one obstacle after the other with her. And I just need to be more mindful of the type of clients that I do bring on in the future. I think that's a smart reaction indeed. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, You're well, welcome. let's now join Judge Marilyn Millian and her husband, Judge John, for another session of After the Verdict. So, Marilyn, I think it was uh, Andy Warhol who said many years ago that in the future, everyone's going to be famous for 15 minutes. 15 minutes of fame. World famous. And uh, in this case, I guess the plaintiff, Ayana, wanted to grab her 15 minutes, and she was willing to pay up to a point. Right, right. I, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I do like the message uh, to be out there that someone can make a mistake right. and that you can be a comeback. I just, um, I find it kind of humorous uh, or odd that your entire comeback story is your crime as opposed to the actual comeback. Right. You know? and, and certainly having a felony conviction or being being convicted of a crime shouldn't be necessarily a scarlet letter that you carry around no. throughout your life for no. the rest of your life. And, and kudos to you if you are the message to other right. people that you can turn your life around. The thing that kind of struck me on this is that the manufactured brand was the turning the life around part almost. Right. Um, Right. But but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Listen, a message is a message, and if that's if she wants to pay somebody, to, you know, to do that, and she wants to uh, convey that message, that's awesome. Right. Certainly, uh, we want people to redeem themselves, and we love stories of redemption. But the fact of the matter is that when you're in a courtroom and you have prior conviction for a crime that involves dishonesty, judges are supposed to take that into consideration, even when they evaluate the testimony, and so are juries. We instruct juries that's right. to consider that that's when they right. weigh the testimony of, of the parties. Or that's jurors, that's right? right. That is an admissible fact that the person who's cross-examining you can say you have been previously convicted of a crime of, uh, of deceit or moral turpitude. Right. Well, hopefully, Ayana has turned things around and is heading the right direction from here. I hope so, too. Rachel, it's interesting. I think the video is like an oral contract. It's better to do in writing because you have a longer statute of limitations and also the writing is going to be clearer because it's not done on the fly. <laughs>